Hi, I'm Nikki, the Obsessive Bookseller. Welcome to this month's Read Burn Hoard series. Every month I pick at random one shelf in my unread collection and focus the entire month on evaluating whether or not I want to read, hoard, or burn the titles on it. At the end of last month, the jar gave me shelf number 22 which I'm thrilled about because it is not one of the higher up shelves, so I'll actually be able to get to it and leave all the books on the shelf this month. Having to pull down all of those other ones just so I could film and manage them is really messing with my library's feng shui. So yeah, this will be great. Anyway, this challenge was originally inspired by Books with Emily Fox's One Week, One Shelf challenge, and I am completely loving it. It's still my favorite thing that I'm filming on the channel so far. But yeah, can't wait to see what I'll be reading this month. Let's go take a look. This is the shelf in question, and this is the first time I'm looking at it since picking the number. So we have just initially a ton of really enticing titles on here. Um, I think just for the sake of evaluation, I'm going to move these two Jean Linskold books up with the rest of the collection to be evaluated when I get to that shelf. And for now, deal with this one here. I brought Grace of Kings back over here from my high priority shelves. I figure it totally counts, and it's going to be very hard to convince me not to pick this series up this month. But it kind of feels like cheating because I've purchased these since starting the Read Burn Horde series, so they're not ones that have been sitting on here forever. This one, it's called Iron Hunt by Marjorie Liu. It's number one in a random urban fantasy series. Mine doesn't have a cover. I have, I like urban fantasy enough that I've been hanging on to a lot of titles just as place markers because I want to explore them eventually, but they're not high priority authors. I know this author, if I'm thinking of the right person, does a lot of work with the romance stuff. So I don't really want a super romance heavy urban fantasy, but it depends on if it's done well. Anyway, I am definitely setting that one aside for evaluation. And unless I totally hate the series, I'm probably hoarding these, just saying. Oh, and notice that my second book here has the UK edition cover. Did not do that on purpose. It was annoying me. And then I got news of the fourth book being like not in line with the regular printing. And I thought, oh good. So even if I buy the fourth book as it is, my collection's already screwed up, so nothing lost. <laughs> so the one place where an error is actually working in my favor. I love this cover, The Summer Dragon by Todd Lockwood. This is one of the prettiest books on my shelves, and it's got the word dragon and it had a pretty cover, so of course I'm going to bring it home. The reviews that I saw initially when it came out were not super compelling. And the fact that a second book hasn't been announced and it's been several years has me wondering if... I, I think that's the reason I haven't read it yet. If there was a second book out or coming out, then I think I might have felt a little more antsy to get to it sooner than later. Oops. But I love the way that one looks. That might be a hoard just because of the cover. If I hadn't bought these, I probably would be reading this one this month is all I'm saying. And then I bought the first two books in Jen Lyon's Ruin of Kings series. I got them on Book Outlet and I tried really hard not to allow myself to order the next couple of books considering I haven't read anything in the series yet. Um, I hear things are very hit or miss. I've seen so many mixed reviews on it. I guess the style that she told the story in was a little bit different and unconventional. And generally, that kind of stuff works for me, like with the inclusion of footnotes and stuff. Although, I plan on doing that one on audio, so I'm not quite sure how the footnotes would translate. I may have to do, like, read it in tandem and see how they do it. But I've been curious about that one. This was a total cover by Gates of Stone, Angus McCallan. First book in a series, I believe it's Asian-inspired fantasy, and I love anything to do with animals. There is a person riding a white tiger on the cover, so very intrigued by just even the idea of that. And then I have, without covers here, an urban fantasy series, probably about werewolves. I think that would be a really good one to evaluate. As it appears, this one doesn't even have an audio option. 
and none of my copies have covers, so might be a good good one to look into unhauling. One called Photosphere by Scott McKay. This is, I think, like a science fiction, perhaps futuristic urban fantasy. I'm not quite sure on that. But the what I have left of the cover and the premise at one point sounded really compelling, but need to evaluate that one. By the way, I think uh, just looking at the shelf here, all of these are my read candidates. I, I did a research on this one recently when I picked it up, and I know I'm interested in at least giving it a shot, so I don't need to really look into it too much. And then I have a few books here by Violet Milan. I believe The Mirror Prince. If these are indeed all a part of the same series, which I think they are, uh, Mirror Prince is the first one. I've had this on my shelves for ages. And at one point, I made a Goodreads list of all of the things I was really excited to read from my shelves and ranked it by average rating. And this one always seems to come up near the top, so it seems like those who have read it liked it. Beyond that, I don't know anything about the series other than I'd really like to get to it eventually. This one is another one that's ebook only. So that, honestly, because I have more time to listen to audiobooks, is probably why I haven't gotten around to it yet. But I do know that I'm interested in enough in this series after having it be on my radar for so many years that that's a candidate for reading and hoarding. And then a random fantasy book that I picked up, I think while just browsing at another bookstore while I was a bookseller, The Princes of the Golden Cage by Nathalie Mallet. My favorite thing about fantasy is the world building element, and so the exotic location of this is what immediately drew drew me to buying it into the cover. And I don't really know anything beyond that. I don't know if this is the first book in a series. I don't know if it's like one of many. So yes, we'll be evaluating those. So now I'm gonna have to figure out what I think I might wanna read this next month. The whole point of this series is to read the best books first and the ones I'm most excited about, and so that would be these. The entire booktube community is geeking out about those. This one, I'm just afraid I'm not going to like it that much, but I still want to give it a try. And then just pure curiosity on these. I love these hardcovers. I'd love to be able to get the books three and four in the series, but to do that I have to feel good about reading the first one. Yeah. Jeez, this one's so new, I don't even have it marked on whether or not it's available in audiobook. That one's interesting. And then if I had time for a physical read, that one would be a fun one to do. I'm going to think about this for a couple of days. I do have some time to decide before what I was officially supposed to start reading, so I will think about those and maybe research those and get back to you on what I decide to pick up. This is a really fun shelf. Hello, read, burn, hoard update. So I find myself with a little bit of extra time this morning. So I'm gonna go through and research these unknown titles to see if I actually wanna read them or if I wanna consider them as candidates for unhaul. The most I've done with these at this point is just read the back of the book and maybe the first couple of pages to see if I like them. But that was years ago. So I have no idea if they're gonna make the cut this time around, so. Yeah, let me do some research and I'll let you know what I've decided. I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep this one. I've got four books in the series and it's been one that I've been interested in. But I just want to do just a couple of, like, just a little bit of digging to see how high up on my priority list I want to put it. Okay, the first one I researched was Iron Hunt by Marjorie Liu. This is an author primarily known for romance and paranormal romance. And right there is kind of a red flag for me because... I don't like the more love story driven urban fantasy stuff, or paranormal stuff I should say. I very much prefer the more plot driven ones where they're talking about external conflicts and things like that. So the fact that this one doesn't have a cover, the type of stories this author likes to tell, the ratings and reviews I didn't find very helpful at all because if paranormal romance really works for you, then yeah, you're going to really like this one. If they, if it doesn't, then it's kind of a dud. So I think considering that this one doesn't have a cover, I'm going to 
make it a strong candidate for burning this month. I considered adding it to my Project Urban Fantasy list, but compared to some of the titles on there that I'm really interested in getting to, this one was so low priority that I didn't really even want to include it on the list. It would have been just arbitrary. So I think this is a good candidate for burning. So I'm gonna set it aside and see how that feels by the end of the month. So on to the next one. The next one, Phytosphere by Scott McKay. Oh my gosh, mediocre ratings across the board. I was thinking just from reading the back of the book that it looks right at my alley because it has a science and biological component to it. Component. And I've been really interested in stuff like that lately. The reviews are totally underwhelming. Something about the premise of it makes me want to at least give it a try. So I might hang on to it, especially because it's a standalone sci-fi. So what I think I'm going to do with this one is add it to my Project Sci-Fi shortlist. And if I don't get around to it by the time we hit Read Burn Horde shelf number 22 next time around, then I'll get rid of it then. The next one, Princes of the Golden Cage by Nathalie Mallet. I believe this is a standalone fantasy novel. And just reading the back of the book sounds like something I'd be interested in. A couple of elements about the premise promise some uh, like forced politics, which I know is vague, but I kind of like the idea for it. I didn't read too many reviews on it, but the overwhelming majority of what I read was that the book is very poorly edited, which I have to say doesn't bother me as much as it should. So for now, I think I'm going to hang on to this one as well. It's a standalone. How often do you come across fantasy standalones? And this one will probably remain a standalone because it was published in 2007. Okay, I have a trilogy here that I've been hoarding for years. It's Tales of an Urban Werewolf. Howling at the Moon is the first book. And just reading the back of the book, I can already tell you that it is not what I am interested in reading at the moment. A lot of these paranormal romances have this very bubbly, like, oh, she's a successful blah blah, and she's got a great boyfriend, and blah blah, but she changes form once a month, and if the word sexy is used on the back of a paranormal book, I don't want to read it. I just don't have the patience for that kind of story. I need so much more substance to drive the plot other than, is she going to get the guy? And to be totally honest, those kind of books, there's a place and time for them, and I crave them, but I don't crave them in a paranormal th format. If I'm going to read something like that, I want a new adult book, where that's all that it's about. Because usually in these instances, the paranormal is kind of half-assed, and the romance is kind of half-assed, so you get just like a, a mashup of something that's not very satisfying at all, as opposed to something that is specifically whether or not she gets the guy, if that makes sense. Anyway, I've had these for so long and I am happy to say that I don't think I will miss them if I burn them. Okay, so this is why we do research. So Mirror Prince by Violet Milan. I thought I had a four book series. So I have these other ones that I went and pulled. Wait. And as it turns out, this is a separate series. This is books one, three, and four in a different series, and I am much more interested in this one than I am this one. In fact, reading the back of the cover of this one makes me not very, like, tempted to pick it up immediately, but this one, however, mine doesn't have a cover, much more enticing. You know, mercenaries, partner bond for life, that kind of thing. Seems like it has a lot more action in it, whereas this one is like... Yeah, sounding a lot more mediocre, and the reviews supported that. This one had much lower reviews than the other series. So, I, I don't know. I'm thinking definitely start with the other series, but I've been tied to wanting to read this one for so long that I find myself in a weird position of having to reconsider everything I thought I knew about it. So, I think what I'm going to do, since I have this one, it has a cover, I may as well hang on to it and try the other series first and if I like the writing style enough to want to read more from her then great I have one if I don't then I can let go of the whole thing but yeah interesting turn of events for me I have added back the ones I've decided I'm keeping for the moment here and this is my burn pile I'm pretty sure these are going this month I'll let it percolate for a couple of weeks but 
Yep. So that's some space. That's pretty good. I was sitting here thinking about the progress I've been making on this project, trying to create more space so I can get a comfy chair in this room. And the fact that I have only four books over here for burn and I'm only reading one. So, I mean, five books per shelf is actually a pretty good reduction from a percentage standpoint. But I'm like, how am I going to get through everything and like meet all my goals if I'm not willing to be a little more ruthless in my burning evaluation? Just because I'm only picking one book to read from the specific shelf chosen each month does not mean I am not also reading other books from other shelves throughout the month. So progress feels slow for this particular video series, but overall, let me show you what I've done. These are all the books I've read from my physical collection within the last like three months. It used to take me almost the entire year to read through this many physically owned books because I wasn't prioritizing them, which means I didn't have to go through and shift everything to make space to fit them all more than once or twice a year. So that is an unintended consequence. But in any case, I am definitely reading more than just one book a month from this section. I've got high priorities up here. I seem to be reading about three or four of them per month, which is an awesome turnaround. And so all of it will add up over time. It's kind of hard to see right now the progress. Like the holes that I've made have gotten filled in with books that I've purchased. But I've been a lot more picky lately on the things that I've been bringing home. And trying to only pick up books that I've already read. Anyway, all progress is good progress. I love looking at the shelves where I've determined that everything on it is something I want to read. I feel like that's a very satisfying way to have a collection. And it goes in line with my philosophies of reading just the best books first. Because life's too short to read books you're not liking. Anyway, I will see you at my next update. Hi, Nikki here with a Read, Burn, Hoard update. So I finally started the book for the month and it's going to be Summer Dragon by Todd Lockwood. It's the first book in a series, but as it was written in 2016 and there's no hint of another one, who knows? It's a really good thing I've been working so hard to get myself down to just a couple of books going at once because I had planned on doing this one on audio it's easier to build into my schedule, but the audio was not working for me at all, so I decided to switch to reading it physically, which is not a huge sacrifice because, I mean, we've got dragon illustrations throughout the whole thing, and that really adds to the experience for me. But anyway, I started last night. I'm on page 50, chapter 7, and so far it's really good. What I was not liking about the audio it was a very young, high-voiced girl, and it reminded me too much of young adult. And the way she was doing adult male characters was so funny. It was not believable in the slightest. And it was bringing the quality of the story down for me. I have, from what little I've heard about this book, is it comes across YA to some people. And I think if you've listened to the audiobook for it, that doesn't surprise me at all. I switched back to the print and am enjoying it so much more. It jumped from a two star to immediately a four star read. That's quite drastic. Um, so far it's a pretty simple plot, but it's an engaging one. And if you watch my channel at all, you know me, I love dragons. I love the day to day life with dragons. And this one is incredibly dragon centric. They're the types of dragons that I love. I think there's more dynamics to them than we're seeing right up front. And I love how much the main character loves dragons. It's going well. It might take me like three or four times as long to read it physically, but I've got time and I'm committed and it's really good so far. Hello, time for a Read, Burn, Hoard update. I made progress in The Summer Dragon by Todd Lockwood. I'm about the 30% mark. The book is going along really quickly. The one or two reviews that I saw early on said that the book felt a little YA. And I can see where they're coming from in that case. It's got just a little tinge of sophistication above that, but it is a very simple story. There's only a handful of characters, there's not a lot of moving parts, there's not a lot of dynamics, but it's dragon awesomeness, so that kind of compensates a little bit. 
I'm far enough along to have been introduced to the main threat of the story, and they, the threat is done pretty well. I'm very intrigued to see how they're going to handle it. And what I love most is for a dragon book, it continues to be all about the dragons. And that's obviously what you want to hear. I'm also reading this one physically and really enjoying the illustrations throughout. The problem is, is that the illustration will come at the beginning of a chapter and the thing illustrated won't happen until maybe a couple of chapters in. So it's kind of a spoiler in a sense. But I rarely physically read books with illustrations, so eh, I'm going with it. I started with the audio for a bit, but immediately found the narration a little bit too YA. Um, I have reviewed the narrator before, and she's just not one of my favorites. Uh, the way she does adult male voices makes her sound like she's try like mocking her dad's voice. And so for me, it comes across a little bit silly. So I don't really care for her dialogue, but during the passages where it's just narration, totally fine. But between that and the illustrations, that's why I ended up to switching just making this a physical read. But the people who mentioned that it felt more YA might have done the audio version, because I do believe that that specific narrator usually does YA stuff, so it makes sense. Anyway, the overall consensus so far at 30% in is that I'm liking it, I don't hate that I'm reading it, and I'm looking forward to seeing where things go. Good morning! I'm here with a final Read Burn Horde update for the month. I finished, kind of, The Summer Dragon by Todd Lockwood. This book was kind of all over the place for me. So the beginning was about a three star, and then there was a good chunk of about 100 pages in the middle there with the Dragons were the center focus. The action was really exciting. That was a solid four star. I was really enjoying myself while reading it. And then I got to part two. I marked it. Part two starts right here where this flap is. And I kept reading for another hundred pages or so before I finally got fed up with the book. And I probably only had about 120 pages left to go after that. It was like a one or two star read from there. I did not enjoy my time at all. It felt like it took forever for the plot to advance at all. Like I read, I'd read like 20 pages and nothing would have happened. And then we shifted focus from the dragons to some weird, weak theological debate. I kind of get what it was going for, but it felt really thin to me and there was nothing there to grab my attention. And then the bad guys were cool, but then I felt like all of the interactions with them was kind of contrived. Like, did they really have to go be in the place that they were at to get attacked at that particular time? That's why they were in that place, is because he needed a way for them to get attacked. And so I felt myself losing interest with each passing page and starting to get more and more cranky with it. So I finally decided to just speed read to the end. This is not something I normally do. I'm such a completionist. I'm either fed up enough to put the book down completely and call a DNF, or I'm interested enough to continue to the end and we'll push through. There, there's really not a lot of gray area, but in this case there was, because like every 20 pages or so there would be something interesting, but I found myself lacking the patience to sit and uh, physically read through all of it because it was taking so long to get to any new plot point. So I did the trick where you read like the first couple sentences or paragraph of each new chapter and then the last couple of paragraphs for each chapter or page break. And so you can kind of get the gist of where things start and end within the story. And I have to say, I finished the book with the major plot points and don't feel like I missed out on the, the like five hours it would have taken me to get that far. The illustrations remain good throughout the whole book. I enjoyed seeing those, but yeah, beyond that, it just didn't sustain my interest. The dragons were awesome. There was a good focus on them, but the I didn't like anything about the plot beyond that. Now I have the weird debate of deciding whether or not to keep the physical book, because I didn't really like the story enough to hang on to it, but I love the cover. I think it is gorgeous. 
And so I've got to decide whether or not I want to make room for something just because it's beautiful and not because I liked what was in it. But see, that feels kind of harsh because I'm probably going to end up rating it really lowly because I had to speed read to the end. But that one four star section in the middle was worth a lot of the effort. So I don't know, instead of like a one star, I might round it up to two. And who knows, maybe the plot points that weren't working for me would be really interesting to someone else. So, uh, yeah. But I think I am not going to continue on even if a second book does come out. So I am officially calling this one a DNF for the series. I'm doing a new thing where I'm trying to review all my books in a timely manner. And with ones like these, I'm probably not going to do a separate review on the channel. So I'm going to link my written review on Goodreads. So if you're interested in other books you might like, if you liked this book or if you didn't like this book, I have some suggestions of dragon books that you might like a lot more. Um, I have a video for that and I also have a full review with that indicated at the bottom on Goodreads, so I will link that below. But with that done, which I'm actually excited I finally read that because it's been sitting on my shelf for so long, I'm finally ready to pick a new book. Oh no, wait. I should wrap up the shelf. Hang on. Final verdict, keeping all of these. Burning those. So let's go put these in the burn bin. The bin got buried. One moment. Yeah, that took more effort than it should have. Okay, here's everything I'm burning. A couple more strips to the pile. So... I don't remember what month we're on, but we are getting awfully close to having a full bin of burns, which I love. Okay, now with that done, time to pick my next shelf. Oh, I grabbed two. I want the pink one. Okay, next month's shelf is number 27. So I will show you what's on it at the beginning of the next episode. So thank you so much for following along on this journey with me, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.